Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on our new Q&A with Jay. We are covering a lot of topics today, so let's get started. Welcome, Jay. It's thank always you. good to see you. My pleasure. Oh, well, thank you. So we have had a lot happen in the last couple of months. One, let's talk about Mobile Hall. Lots of people are wondering what's going to be happening with Mobile Hall and, and where we are in the planning and, right. I guess, construction of, of what's going to happen yeah. there. Uh, lots of us are still wondering what's going to happen exactly. <laughs> uh, but, no, we're, we're making a lot of progress. So we now have some clarity, yeah. and uh, the biggest news is that We've expanded the scope of the project beyond just the CBA GSB combo that will yes. be mobile hall. And we've essentially added the undergraduate teaching center across the street as part now of the project. Okay. And so to the outside world, I think it'll look like a two building project. Yeah. Mova Hall, which internally is two buildings already. Right. But then also across the street, uh, the UTC, which those of us that have taught and worked in that space, I think all agree, need some help. Yes. And so that's a big win, I think, for our students and for campus. And it's we're working through the planning now. Uh, it's trying to figure out what should be in Mobile Hall, knowing we're going to also have space in UTC. Mm -hmm. And then also trying to figure out what will become of UTC for the whole campus, knowing that the Macomb School has a big need for it. Right. And so it's kind of a parallel planning process that we're working on now. So have you guys, I mean, Yes, of course you've thought about it, but <laughs> just the displacement and how you're going to handle sort of how people are moved around during the construction. Yeah, I hope we can edit question. this part out because we don't exactly know <laughs> That's okay, everything though. yet. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be a disruption and, and we're working through it. There's not a lot of slack space on mm -hmm. campus, so it's not easy to say, oh, we're all going to go sure. here. And there's you know, big parts. It's, you know, over 200 faculty, over 300 staff. Mm -hmm. And then you've got all the classes we teach. Right. So trying to figure out where we put everybody um, is going to be a large part of probably the next year's process. Right. Um, but I don't, you know, no easy answer yet, but it's on our minds very much. That's good. Well, the thing is just to be patient with the whole process, right? So it's, we're all going to have to exercise <laughs> some patience. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, you know? Of course. I mean, I think, you know, part of, some of this is we're going to have some dislocation and suffering for sure. a couple of years. But on the other hand, this is probably 30 years of benefit mm -hmm. for our school, for our students, um, and for all of us, faculty, staff, right. alumni. So it's going to be bumpy, but it's going to be worth it. Look at you, that future focus thing. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It. And a little human-centered, hopefully. Absolutely. That's right, that's right. <laughs> We're also just coming off the uh, most recent advisory council meeting. So let's talk a little bit about that. What happened, some of the announcements that you made right. at advisory council. Yeah, it was a great a great day. We had um, uh, one of our Hall of Fame inductees, Cable Hutchison, Ambassador Hutchison, uh, who um, is now the ambassador for the U.S. to, to NATO. Yeah. Uh, she was interviewed. Um, I talked a little bit about uh, Mova Hall, walked through that same thing we just walked through. Mm -hmm. uh, talked a little bit about, we have a center that um, is going to be rebranded. Uh, it's Carlos Carvalho runs the center right. with a lot of help. Um, that's been the, the SEPA has been the acronym. It's going to be relaunched as the Salem Policy Center. And so we talked about that. Uh, we did a really neat thing with the audience. We used eye clickers, those. Oh, yeah. yeah um, and we used that in that, that class that, that Carlos and his team are teaching. They, they took some freshmen through a question about what's the world like that we live in today. Mm -hmm. And they gave him, he gave the students that same quiz. So we used that quiz to give the, uh, the advisory council attendees and ask them, what do they know about you know world poverty or population growth or yeah. those kinds of things? And it was really fun to compare and contrast what our people thought versus what college freshmen thought. Sure. Yeah. So how 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 did they? Well, what did you learn about yeah. that? <laughs> uh, so I think I mean the, the freshmen I think had a lot of misperceptions mm -hmm. that that uh, they thought essentially the world was going worse. I, that my take on it is they believe the world was going worse than it was. Huh. Uh, the advisory council was a little more accurate. A couple of spots that they probably weren't quite on par with the data, sure. but had a more rosy outlook, which I think is interesting, that juxtaposition of uh, what people are thinking when they're 18 year olds coming to college and yes. what they've been learning and hearing versus what our council members are thinking yeah. and what they've been hearing. Yeah, that's very interesting. So it's also you made um, a, a leadership announcement. We we all know the new um, dean of undergraduate programs is Doug Morris, but he's now started in the position. So yep. just talk about that transition and, and what you hope uh, to see uh, as far as programs continue and yeah. just his efforts. No, it's, it's great. I'm, I'm really grateful for Doug for taking on the role. You know, I, Dave Platt did a tremendous job mm -hmm. and uh, and we were sad to see him go to the provost's office, although I think it's good for campus that he went there. Uh, we tried a different search, so we tried a wider, cast a wider net, 
Uh, and it was great. We learned some things that people were interested in leadership roles that we didn't know necessarily mm -hmm. that they were interested in those roles. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, we've learned some parts there. Uh, but I, you know, kudos to Doug for taking this on. It's, a, it's a, obviously a huge part of our school. Um, and it's, you know, he's, he's now a steward of the fifth ranked undergraduate program in the country. That's and awesome. so he's got a great team. Uh, I think a lot of it, we went through the processes. Uh, whoever was going to be selected was relying on a great team. So it's, it's not just one person who has to be out there um, by him or herself. Right. Um, and Doug has had a great set of experiences from being a first gen college student himself. Yes. Uh, to, to being chair of a department, uh, some great leadership across campus. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be fabulous. Yeah, that's awesome. So now let's talk about Hall of Fame. Uh, the Hall of Fame a ceremony just happened a few weeks ago, and we have some incredible inductees. So let's talk right. about them and also the Rising Stars as well. Yeah, I thought that to me the theme largely of the Hall of Fame, including the Rising Stars this year, uh, was just how diverse what people from our school, what they go out and do mm -hmm. uh, in the world. We had five Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, two ambassadors, one who's a business school grad, the other one, Ambassador Hutchison, um, who was not a McCombs grad, but had this big impact helping launch an energy sure. center with us in the law school. Mm -hmm. uh, so we recognized her for her contributions there and, and broad, more broadly. Uh, Phil Canfield from Canfield Business Honors, Neela Farr Malavi, who's had this great record uh, running ener the energy practice for PwC in mm -hmm. Houston, um, and then Mark Myers, who's a, a you know, a heroic figure in, in real estate in Texas. Yeah. And, and so great slate there. On the Rising Star side, um, three really interesting people and who've all done amazing things for where they are in their career. Um, from Lance Leffler, who's now CFO of Halliburton, uh, Carlos Whitaker, who's a rising star on Wall Street and a, and a graduate of our accounting program. Yeah. And, and then Kova Gupta, who uh, came out of here with three degrees, including a McCombs degree. Wow and now is making films and television shows in India with, yeah. uh, and a lot of work with books with a social purpose. So anyway, just the, the, the diversity of impacts that our people yeah. are making, I think was very inspiring. That's so awesome. What a room. I mean, the night it seems like was full of just, not just celebration, but inspiration too. You know, sometimes you walk away from those events thinking, I need to do more. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's I'm humbling, not doing right? enough. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. amazing no, it's though. True. It's yeah. true. And, and I, I look at that room and it's, it's really a McCombs all-star team. Yes. You know, and you look out fantastic. and think about all these people come back home for that event and it's it's a lot of fun yeah that's awesome now let's talk about some of the leadership um, that we hope to bring on board here at McCombs we are we'll be hiring a senior senior associate dean of business affairs and also a new COO so let's talk right. about both those positions right right so one one position just a long title yes uh, oh <laughs> okay. gotcha, gotcha. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry let's combine the two that yeah, is a long yeah. title <laughs> yeah um, and you know really it's a it's a it's a few different things um, you know I think the school's got more complicated from a business standpoint uh, Susie Brown has, to her credit, held a lot of things together and just had more and more heaped on her plate. Mm -hmm. uh, she's announced that she's planning to retire at the end of 2020. Um, so that is a nice time, natural time for us to revisit the really the business side of the, of the business school mm -hmm. and what we need from a leadership perspective with her transition. Uh, so we have, are reimagining that role, uh, sort of broadening its scope uh, to also think about uh, functions around IT, HR, mm -hmm. plus all the finance pieces and facilities. Um, so uh, we're in a national search now and have hired a search firm. We are starting to get indications of interest, which look really promising. Uh, Janet Dukrich is chairing the search committee mm -hmm. uh, with representation from both faculty and staff, uh, which I think will be, will be great. Uh, we hope to do some first round interviews through the committee later this calendar year. My guess is that we'll have some flyouts from finalists probably in January, mm -hmm. uh, but um, I'm excited about it. Uh, it's gonna be a great chance for somebody to come in and build on the legacy that, that Susie's left here and also uh, really elevate continue to elevate many of our business practices. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we still have a year with Susie, so. That's right, that's, that's right. good. But it'll be great to, to uh, focus on that transition and, right. and, and look at how McCombs is planning to move forward. Right. So that's good. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us on our Q&A with Jay. We also want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving, that's right? right. Any, yeah. any Thanksgiving message you'd like to? Oh, we didn't <laughs> practice that part. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I uh, hope you all get a, a nice break, a well-deserved break, and spend time with your family and friends, and, and pause to reflect on all the great things we have, both professionally and personally. I think it's a great time of year for that. That's right. Awesome. Well, happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time on the Q&A with Jay.